What's going on, people? Welcome back to the channel. KG is back. Newcastle versus Leeds match preview time. But before I get into that, please hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Drop your comments on the video. Turn your notification bell on. And also, um, yeah, uh, big thanks on the last video. Mr. P donated a super thanks on the last video. So shout out to you. All donations are, are much appreciated by myself and, and go back into the channel. Uh, before I continue with this, I've got to say rest in peace to Pele. I didn't get to see him play. But obviously, a lot of people say he's the greatest of all time. A lot of things that you see your favorite players doing, Pele did first and, you know, forefather of the, of the game. Got to say big respect and rest in peace to Pele. Now, listen, just a couple of notes from the, the Man City game, which I thought was is interesting because it kind of ties into our next opponent, Newcastle, in terms of our defensive woes. Listen, we know the golfing class between Leeds and Man City is great. I mean, they they were literally toying around with us. They didn't even get out of second gear for me, Man City. Um, and if and Grealish has his shooting boots on, who knows what the score could have been if they scored earlier on. But just in defence, you know, you, you can accept at times where you get beat by better teams. And, you know, maybe De Bruyne scores a 25-yard or 30-yard and you go, wow, no stopping that. Maybe it's a set piece and... Although you don't like to concede at set pieces, you understand because they're well drilled. But the way that we concede goals is is it's disheartening, bordering on embarrassing. And I don't know which one it goes towards more because you can just see within our defence, with all due respect, they don't have the intelligence to play against top-level Premier League teams. They just don't have it. You can see the balls going in and around them, through them. It's just not good enough. And, you know, and shout out to everyone that was with me on the watch-along. You know, between that that goal that was conceded when Cooper gave the hospital ball to Robin Cock, a lot of people saying it was Cooper, and yes, it was a poor pass. But Robin Cock has got to anticipate that more and move towards the ball. Instead, he was just standing there waiting for the ball to come to him against a pressing Manchester City team. And we got punished for it. it. It's just a calamity of errors, and it's not the first time, is it? It's just not the first time, and I doubt it will be the last we just have to clean up on things like that. And I mean, Jesse alluded to that in terms of working more defensively, but how much more work can they get done? You know, what are they doing? Like, something something has to give in, in that department. Something has to give. You know, when we're talking about, you know, buying defenders, I mean, I wish that we was in the Evan and Dicker sweet, sweet, sweepstakes. I wish we were, but obviously we're not. You know, he's going to be a free transfer at the end of the season, but... I'm pretty sure that he's going to be going to a, a European club, you know, a Champions League club. But it's a, it's a shame because that that's who, you know, that's the kind of defender that I would love to bring in. But is what it is. We have to clean up on that, though. Ball retention as well. Make two passes. You know, against Man City, whether these, these guys were just afraid, but the amount of times, and it wasn't just Mark Rucker. Mark Rucker got the lightning rod of this, but it was, it was everybody. You know, we'd have the ball, no pressure, and we'd just kick it out of play. The amount of times Man City had to throw him because we just kick out of play, last count of it, or we just pass it back to him after after being under no pressure. Have to do better with the ball. Have to. Um, I thought as well, yeah, I mean, listen, the the positives from the game for me in, in particular, the two positives for me was Willy Nanto one. I thought he was excellent. And in the terms of what we were given and what he was doing, he was excellent. Always looking to go forward, always looking to pass forward, trying to be a threat. He's becoming one of those players where he's just going to keep getting kicked up, kicked over. It's just the way it is. He's that dangerous that players are just going to keep fouling him. And we saw that against Man City. So it was very promising from Willie Nanto. Hopefully his mate, Crescencio Somerville, is back for the Newcastle game. I believe he will be will be starting in this one, hopefully. Jesse says he's he's ready and available because those two have got a great connection, great chemistry on and off the pitch. And they're, and they're two of our main threats, you know, along with Rodrigo, you know, so we need them both on the pitch for sure. You know, not for sure, for sure. Okay. Um, so he was great. And of course, JB, when he came on, excellent. I thought he was excellent for, a, a, I think, believe that was his debut in the Prem against his former club, being Man City and everything. I thought he looked great on the ball. I thought his passing was well, and he was strong. You know, he wasn't getting pushed over. I think that, you know, he is another midfield option that we need to utilise more. You know, because I had a very interesting question on the watch long where someone asked, is Rucker a starter in this Leeds team? And 
listen, Rocker for me overall has been has been good, okay to good. He hasn't been anywhere near consistent as Tyler Adams, who will be back this weekend, thankfully. But Rucker is one of those where you would look to have another midfielder to compete with him and say, you know, if you're not playing well, here's somebody else. You know, I, I mentioned Weston McKenney, who's at Juventus, who are going through a whole bunch of financial issues. I would love to, uh, uh, you know, test the resolve of Juventus and and see if we can convince Weston McKenney if he'd love to come. Because imagine that, having Adams and McKenney in our midfield. I think it would be brilliant. And, you know, for people saying it's unrealistic, well, listen, Mateus Cunha went to Wolverhampton Wanderers when they were bottom of the league. He didn't go there because he fancied it. He got he went there because he obviously believes in the project. He obviously knows a few players there. And it would be the same for Weston McKenney. We're not in a in a in a great position in the league, but obviously Tyler Adams is, he knows very well. I'm sure he knows Jesse Marsh and he'll know Brendan Aronson too. So we could have convinced him, I I believe. But the money, I don't think we've got that kind of money anyway. So it's a non starter. But the point is imagine if you do have another midfielder in that of that ilk. It just makes everything better in your squad. It makes it makes players have to work harder, play better. Because, yeah, Mr. Mark Rucker did not have a good game. I thought he did well in the first 10 minutes. He made a couple of really good interceptions, but his passing was way off it. Way, way off it. Was not good. But there was a, there was a few of that. There was a lot of that in that game. He, he wasn't alone. He wasn't alone. But that's the thing. You just wish that you had more quality in the squad and that you didn't have to see some of these players. But it is what it is right now. Is what it is. I will say, though, it was great to have Leeds back on because no matter how disheartening the result was, you know, the disappointment, the lows, you know, the high of the goal, at least you feel something. You know, I watch a lot of football and you even watch that last tournament that was on and you, you can watch it, but there's no there's no real emotion. At least you get your emotion back with Leeds United for me anyway. Um, who else? Let me just get yeah, Pascal Stroud. Got to say this. Um, I remember saying at the start of the season that he needs to be looking at around five goals. He's he, just from his set piece ability and his aerial threat, and that was a well taken goal. Wasn't so good defensively, but hey, nobody nobody was in this game. Um, right, going on Jesse Jesse Marsh's. Oh, 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 before I leave the Man City game, have to say as well because you know, listen, you guys love our chairman. Radrazani. He liked a tweet from Alexi Lalas. Uh, I remember that guy. But um, the tweet was, Leeds aren't supposed to beat Manchester City, so this result doesn't really matter. That's the reality of the EPL hierarchy moving on. Now, obviously, if you look at it like that and Radrazani's liked it, you're probably thinking, man, this guy's got no ambition. What a message from the top we're just supposed to roll over for Man City and then move on. But maybe if you, you know, Radrazani on social media, he's a little spicy. He is a little spicy. So maybe he's saving it. He's liked it. Maybe he's bookmarked it for when we play another big team and we beat them. And then he gives a nice little, you know, smirky comment back to Alexi Lalas, Lalas in the future. You never know with, with Radrazani, but obviously from the cold light of a like of it, it just looks like he likes it and, in that we just need to move on because we're not here to compete with Man City. But maybe he's going to be spicy in the future. We'll wait and see. What do you think? What do you think? Let me know. But obviously, moving on to Newcastle. Um, you know, Newcastle as well have had over 50 hours more to prepare for the game. But we do have some fresh legs coming in. You know, I think Somerville is going to be available, which is great. We need him back with Nanto and, you know, just keep on doing what they've been doing before the last tournament started. I think uh, Harrison will be in contention. Obviously, Tyler Adams is back in the midfield, which is huge. Missed him terribly. Missed him terribly. But um, in terms of Newcastle, you know, we talk about Newcastle here. Oh, no, no, no. Going back to Leeds United, Drame, Cody Drame, because obviously this is going to be a story that we're going to have to watch throughout January. He was asked about Cody Drame. He is fit. Um, but Jesse likes Luke and Rasmus. Uh, Drame is looking for playing time. And that that is the the long and short of it. He is looking to play more first team football, and that, Jesse said he's knocking on the door. Now, when you look at what happened against Man City when we were down, I can't remember if it was two one or three one. We bring on both Ailing and Mateus Click. I think that's when you look to bring on Drame and say, "Listen, I know we're down, but I'm going to throw you one." Go and play with some freedom. There's no pressure on you. Go go and do it. But you saw again, Ailing is trusted. So it wouldn't be a surprise to me at this point if Cody Drame does exit in January. 
that that wouldn't surprise me. And I think it would be very harsh on anyone to say he's not willing to stay for the fight when he can probably look at it and and say, "Am I really the third best right back here out of these out of us three options?" It's debatable. It's debatable. I think he's better than Ailing, and Rasmus hasn't exactly lit it up over on the right. He's got better. I'd, of wholeheartedly, he's got better, but it was a low bar from the start of the season where he looked absolutely lost out there. So you can probably see it from Cody Drama, especially with the clubs he's being linked to and linked with, that he may look to exit. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Have to keep an eye on that. Uh, Bamford won't be available. Stop me if you've heard that one before. But he's, he's not going to be training until at least Sunday. You know, Jesse said that he hasn't been 100% fit since he's been at the club since Jesse Marshall's been at the club, kind of tells you the story. And you just need to move on from that that myth. You just need to move on from it. Um, what I will say as well with Newcastle, going on to Newcastle, they're obviously riding high in the league. Eddie Howe's done a brilliant job. Bruno Guimaraes is an outstanding player in the middle of the field. But for me, what we talked about at the start of this video, the defensive woes we have, Newcastle are the complete opposite to what we are. They have a structured defense where they just know what everyone is doing. And they've got the intelligence too. Sven Butman has been a brilliant signing for them. Uh, Fabian Shah has been brilliant on the ball. I, I actually like Shah a lot. Um, Kieran Trippier has been an excellent addition. He's their captain. Excellent addition and a threat at set pieces. So we've got to look out for that. And of course, you know who they've got in goal, people. You know who they got. A long time favorite of this channel. Sir Nicholas Pope, 10 million, I mean, 10 million for Nick Pope is criminal. And I've said it many times, I'm aware he's not going to get the respect he deserves. He's just not, you know, I think I think he's even leading in the Golden Glove race at the moment. I may, I may be wrong, he's either leading or he's tied. The guy is brilliant. He, he's been brilliant, but there's just something about him what people don't like. I know everyone goes that lazy trope about his distribution being poor. The guy is an outstanding goalkeeper. And for 10 million, Newcastle have rubbed Burnley blind. But that is the base of, of what they do. Brilliant defensively. Obviously, they've got Almiron, who's in a, a one hell of a purple patch after being putting up stinkers week after week for how many games? Over 100 games. So we do have to look out for that. I believe Callum Wilson's going to be available for this game. Oh, joy for us. But we've got to impose our game on them if we can keep the ball better than we did against Man City. That has to be a, a basic, a fundamental, what we've got to do against Newcastle to, to stand any chance of getting anywhere near them. Hopefully, we've got our better players on the pitch in terms of Somerville, Nanto. Rodrigo will probably start again. I know Rodrigo didn't have a good game against City, but at this point of Rodrigo as well, I think he's been used more as the finisher. Uh, we've seen so many times where the build-up thing and the tracking pressing doesn't work for Rodrigo. He's done well doing the finishing bit this season so far. So he'll probably be back in and hopefully he gets a service. I know Gilhart did much, much more in his 20 minutes, but Gilhart will always impose himself on the game more than Rodrigo ever will. You know, Gilhart will look to get the ball, look to hustle and bustle, make things happen. He almost scored in the game against City as well, didn't he? So, but yeah, it, let's expect to see them back. It's going to be a, a real, real tough game. Newcastle on a roll. St. James's Park is is turned into a fortress now. It's tough, it, and and that's that's being, you know, that's putting it lightly. It's tough. It's going to be a very, very tough game. I'm going to ask for your your score predictions, and and please put them in the comments of what you think it's going to be. Um. I, I'm going to say two 0 to Newcastle. Uh, I, I do. I think it. I don't think it's going to be embarrassing. I think it's just going to be a routine win. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be a routine win. So let let's see what let's see what happens there. Let's see what happens there. Uh yeah. Um, I hope I'm wrong. Of, of course, always got to say that whenever I predict a lead last. I hope with everything I'm wrong. So it's up to the boys to to prove me wrong. How do you feel about it? Let me know your thoughts on anything discussed in the video. Always happy to hear your, your comments below. Um, I, did I mention JB in this video? If I didn't mention JB, let me just quickly do it now. Um, JB, 
excellent cameo against Man City, strong on the ball, good passing, no fear, and has made himself another midfield option. Hopefully he's utilized more. If I didn't, if I said that earlier, forgive me. It's just that this is not the first take of this video. I will let you in on a behind the scenes secret. This is not the first take of this video. Um, I've had a few little mess ups in this one, but listen, this is what I do. This is what I do. I, I try and do my best. I try and do my best always. But listen, I will see you guys after the game versus Newcastle. Hopefully it's a positive result. Hopefully. But um, yeah, Come rain or shine, I'll be there. So peace out and I'll see you in the next one.